Hi, Tim Clapham here from hellolux.com and in this tutorial we're going to create this wibbly wobbly effect using cloth in Cinema 4D. I'm going to create a seamless loop um, and this is part two of my looping cloth so if you haven't seen the other one check that out too. Here in Cinema you can see I'm working at 25 frames a second and I've got 300 frames 0 to 299. We have a text spline in here in an extrude. First thing I want to do is just create some nice topology for this. So I'm going to use a volume builder for this. Let's set the voxel size to 2 and I'm also going to just add in a smooth and leave that on the default settings. Come up and hold down Alt, add in a volume mesher. You can see that we have quite a nice dense mesh which is great for detailing cloth but it's not really very even. I've got these corners and things. Um, so what I'm going to do is use the remesher to create um, a nice even mesh. So Shift C, type remesh, hold Alt and hit return and that will make that the parent. Let's set the density to be 80. You can see that give us a nice even distribution in our topology. Obviously if you want more detail you can make that denser but it's going to slow things down. Next I'm going to just come down and choose current state to object and then hold control and disable that hierarchy. Let's call this wobble. If we switch to our polygon mode what we want to do is split all these letters out. So I'm going to type polygon islands to objects and if we execute that fold it open and you can see we have all these children let's select the top one press shift G to ungroup and we can just delete that and now we have each of our letters as a separate object now at this point it would be good to just drop these in a fracture object but for what I want to do it doesn't actually work in a fracture so I'm going to use a cloner before I do that I'm going to open axis center and just center the axes to each of these letters now close that down and I'm going to add in a cloner and we want to drop all of those wobble letters into our cloner. By default, that will be set to a grid array. So let's select the cloner. I'm going to switch back to model mode. Under the object tab, let's just set this to be 6 by 1 by 1. And let's just set the width to be a little bit narrower. Obviously, the kerning is absolutely horrendous because it's so even. But I'm going to switch to axis mode. And I'm just going to kind of do this. Um, in a kind of crude way I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this to kern your letters but it's just a quick and easy way to just bring them all a little bit closer by moving the axes of each object. You could also do this with plane effect or remote graph selections um, or a fracture object but the effect I want to achieve is um, created with a vertex map and unfortunately uh, they're not working with the fracture object in this version which is 2023.1. Anyway we've got them in the cloner now so that's all good. I'm going to add in a plane effector the idea is to add some random motion so under the parameter tab let's set x to 10 y to 25 i'm going to enable rotation and set the pitch and bank to two degrees come to our fields tab and let's in, add in a random field I'm under the fields tab i'm going to set the scale to 350 animation speed to 100 and loop period to 150 now for the effect that i'm going to achieve the loop period is important because this is how long your loop is going to be. Um, if we press play, you can see the result. Not much movement, but also all in a diagonal way. Um, so it's putting the same values, uh, the same random values on all three axes, which is a bit of a limitation with using the plane effector for this. So as a quick fix, I'm going to set this plane effector to only control X and pitch. Also under remapping, I'm going to set minimum to minus 100 so that we have plus and negative values. And let's just unclamp that. You need to click on this small clamp thing that keeps disappearing um, and that will give you unclamp values. And now you can see we've only got left and right movement. What we can do next is take this plane effector and just control drag to duplicate it. Switch to the effectors tab and drag that in. And then I'm going to set X to zero on here and Y to 25. And I'm going to come down and set pitch to zero and bank to, let's say four. Um, and if we come to the fields tab, select our random field. And I'm just going to use a different seed value. Now, when we press play, we should see our wobble moving around a little bit more erratically rather than that diangular, diagonal, diangular. <laughs> Diangular, I like it, new word. Obviously using plane effectors like this isn't ideal and you have to use three if you want it on all three axes. You can actually just use the random effector and if you switch to the effector tab and choose noise in here, 
it's got this indexed parameter if I press play you can see now the movement is all diagonal it's the same but if we do actually enable indexed it will give us a different random value for each axis so you get this much nicer wobble effect um, but the problem with this one is you can't loop it so I'm just going to do it this plain effect way um, I don't think the movement is quite so organic but this isn't even the cloth part yet so I think this will be fine let's select the cloner and come down to simulation add in a cloth tag let's pull this down and come over to the surface tab I'm going to increase the bendiness super high say 500 so we get some really floppy cloth when we press play you can see that obviously gravity is making it drop down I'm going to enable the balloon option and set the overpressure to be pretty low 1.5 just so they inflate slightly and you can see now they do inflate a very small amount as they drop down next let's add a vertex map and we come to the other tags and it should be in there so now we have a vertex map on here we can use fields so I'm going to create another random field here and set the scale to be 350 with an animation speed of 100 and a loop period of 150 now you could have used one of the other random fields we already had and just remap the values might be a bit more efficient but this is going to be fine to see the effect I'm just going to switch off the cloth tag for a moment and now if we press play you can see the letters sort of move through the random field and also you can see that it's animating as well good stuff so let's rewind to the beginning I'm going to add in a curve and just crush this a little bit so let's pull that top bit across and the bottom to the right flatten these out to create a sort of classic high contrast curve this is just going to accentuate the effect when we use this with cloth because what we can do is we can take this vertex map and we can use that in our cloth tag to control where the ballooning takes place so come back to the cloth tag under the basic tab let's just enable this once again and this time switch to mix animation and enable this we can then grab our vertex map drag and drop it into there and for the influence I'm going to set this to be quite low about 20 so mix animation with pins a hundred percent influence will basically pin your mesh to its original position if you reduce the influence then it will blend between the cloth and the original position and by using a vertex map um, we can make that influence vary on the strength within the vertex map I've just increased the influence to 30 because I think that felt a little bit too floppy um, and there we go and that is basically the effect that we're after now the cool thing about doing it this way is that it should theoretically loop to see this I'm just going to um, case the simulation and you can see that um, I've done that nice and quick by speeding it up once that's done we can drag through and the cool thing is as I was saying it loops so if we go to frame 100 and have a look at the result because we've got a loop period of 150 in our random field if we go to 150 frames later to 250 you can see it's exactly the same so if I set my preview area to 100 to 250 or 249 really and now if we press play we should be able to actually see this loop in the editor and if you watch now it just loops perfectly and there we go that's the second way I have of looping cloth in Cinema 4D I hope you found that useful and here's another quick render of the original wibble wobble so I hope you all have fun choosing to wobble whatever it is that you want to wibble thanks for watching